What's going on? It's the loan salesman here. And we have a new segment here called Midnight Sessions. In this series, I'm going to basically cover my thoughts after midnight. Usually I'll be doing these when I'm on the go. So these are gonna be a little bit less prepared, less scripted, so and they're gonna be a bit shorter so I can be a little bit more concise. So here we go. On this episode, we're gonna talk about family. Now, family has different meanings for different types of people, different cultures. Typically, it's people who you consider that you love. Sometimes they're not people you love, but they're related to you anyway. It can be a typical mother, father. It can be biological parents, your grand, you know, your grandmother, you know, whoever's closest to you. Like when we're talking about an immediate family, people who raised you, that's who we typically think of. But sometimes family extends past that. It's just friends, pets, people who you spent your life with, whether it's romantic or plutonic. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because lately I've been thinking a lot about this, especially after having a newborn. I'm thinking to myself, wow, now I have a family. But it's not like I didn't have a family before. I've always had a stable family, you could say, for the most part. A brother, a sister, two parents. That's just about as normal as it gets, right? Being the middle child can be troubling sometimes. As everyone knows, usually the middle child is the, not to say neglected one, but uh, the older one and the younger one usually get a little bit more attention, whereas the middle one kind of just fits in the middle. So what I wanted to get from this is that now that I have my own family separated from who raised me, I have my wife, I have my daughter. I've just been thinking about how important it is to me and how my life has just changed so much. The trajectory of my decisions and my priorities are way more in line with thinking of them rather than my self-interest. The good thing is, is if you have people who can support you, then it's easy to make decisions that might benefit you and them. It can be difficult, however, if, let's say, you want to go out with your friends, or you want to see a certain event, you want to practice a certain thing, spend time on a certain whatever hobby, but you just can't do that. Maybe you need to focus on spending time with the kids. I mean... A baby in general, you just, it needs so much love and attention and attention to detail. So many things you got to look out for. So it's really hard to multitask or knock out different things while you're watching the baby. So on the other hand, there's a lot of family dynamics that believe that whoever is making the money is the person that has the most free time outside of their work. I do find this appealing. I have to disagree. I typically want to support my family in any way possible, whether I'm free or not. And at the moment, I am the one uh, working for the most part. And my wife currently is unemployed. It doesn't mean she doesn't want to work. It's just she prefer to raise our daughter at least, a f you know, a few years before they move on to school. It's, they're very important years of their, of their life, so it's important that we focus on them. Not saying that people who send their kids to daycare are bad people or, you know, trust me, I think once we move to uh, our new city in Tokyo, We'll definitely need extra income because the cost of living there is much higher. At the moment, we're in an area that's not too expensive. I met a lot of different people with different backgrounds. And 
I've seen what they've gone through with their family, losing their parents, losing grandparents, losing brothers and sisters. It's shocking to me how you can move on after experiencing something like that. For me, example, I, I just don't know what I would do if I were to lose my family. I don't think I could move on with my life. I don't know. It would be very difficult to to move past that. And I've seen stories. For example, there's a famous case out here in Japan that just got settled. A father had a wife and daughter. Wife and daughter were going to the park on a bicycle. And when they were crossing the street, an old man hit him with the car. He blamed the car, faulty mechanics or whatever. But unfortunately, the daughter and the wife didn't make it. So this guy, he was all by himself. And he lost the two most important things in his life. And the, and the old man didn't own up to it. And I thought this was shocking because, well, first off, you have a guy who lost everything. Second, you have a guy who won't take responsibility for it. And this is when the man kind of has to make a decision does he let it go or does he press this guy because the old man was in his 90s so it's like okay well he's gonna die soon anyway so what's the point so he continues his fight does the lawsuit and it took a while but finally not too long ago it just got settled and the old man's going to jail and he'll probably die there Got sent into, I believe, eight to ten years. And the old man was fighting for himself. But I think the message here is that though this guy lost everything, he still fought to not get revenge, but really to send a message to the world that, hey, it, it was two things. One, old people driving. Some old people hit a certain age, they definitely shouldn't drive if they don't know what they're doing. Like this guy is obviously blaming the car when he's in control of it. If you're behind the wheel and you're on the road driving, then you're responsible for driving a functional car. I mean, out here we have, in, in Japan, there's inspections on the cars every two to three years. So there's no excuse to have a car that's not, you know, up to date. Or whatever. I mean, yes, of course, cars have faulty mechanics every now and then. You know, you you have to do regular maintenance on them. And if you don't, sometimes things go bad. But going back to the moral of the story is this guy proved his point. And even though he lost everything, he just made it sure that maybe this won't happen again. So someone else doesn't experience that. And I thought that was powerful because... I just think to myself, if I was in a similar situation, I don't know if I could make that same decision. Could I be as selfless or get past my emotion? I mean, he was still emotional about it. The letter he wrote about his losing his wife and daughter, it, it's very emotional. And I don't know. And <laughs> switching gears, I kind of want to get off that somber note, but. You know, I was watching Breaking Bad, and the show, if you haven't watched it before, it's basically about a guy who gets diagnosed with cancer, and he's a bio or chemistry teacher, and basically he has a background with a bigger company he used to be involved with where he could have made a lot of money, and he dropped out for personal reasons, so he's just a high school teacher has a new kid on the way no money to his name and he can't pay for this treatment so he he figures okay well i'm gonna die so and then he figures out oh well i can make this money you know money to make meth and i've seen this show this is my third time watching the series altogether and every time i watch it i find new things learn new things and uh, in the beginning, you know, he, he says he's doing this for himself, for his family. Like, okay, I'm going to do this. Light spoilers. But when you get more towards the end, you realize 
it's not for his family. You just see what all the decisions he has and what it affects his family, his friends, everything. And you see the aftermath of everything. It, it's just it's chaotic. And I think to myself, okay, here's a man who's driven to do something for his family, but then gets consumed by pride. And maybe I see that in some people where, like for example, like, okay, let's say you're at that job, corporate job, it could be any job, and you're working long hours, and here's with me, right? When it comes to working any job, I understand that you do need to put in the time and the effort so you can get more money, promotions, whatever. But at the end of the day, who are you doing it for? Are you doing it for yourself? Are you doing it for your family? Are you doing it to provide? So at one point, when do you take that step back? Like, hey, I need like at least, okay, if I'm working 40 hours a week, that's fine. Anything more than that for me, honestly, I mean, if you're working 60 hours or more, that that's crazy to me. I, I don't. I need that time with my family for myself too. Granted, the justification could be, well, if I grind now, I could retire early or we'll have enough money in the future. You're like, hey, I'm doing this work for, you know, but your family sees that. They see you're working hard. They see you making money, but they still need you, right? What's the point? If you're working all this time and you just never get to see them. When I was in the U.S. Navy, I saw this so many times. I saw people, they would go on the ship nine months, three months, two months deployment. You know, some people would just do an entire tour, leave their family behind. Uh, and then they would go by themselves over to Japan or different country. And it's just crazy to me that. You know, they decided, hey, I'm going to leave my family for a couple of years or I'm going to work this job where I only can see them like 30, 40 percent of the time. It's wild to me. It's, it's such a big sacrifice. And I wonder, is, is it even worth it at that point if you lost all that time with them? But you could at least say, oh, well, you left us behind and they, they still love you. I don't know. I think if it were me. I still choose the time. And currently, my job is lucrative enough to where I can say that I will be leaving something behind and taking care of them here and throughout, but at the same time, having time for them. I think at the moment, though, the one thing I am sacrificing is maybe personal time to myself, which I think I get plenty of versus you know, my wife, but working on top of that still, it's like, I'd rather take that sacrifice than working even more, seeing them less. I mean, now that I'm working at home, it's a lot better. Uh, the dynamics can be a little chaotic at some points, but I still appreciate being with my family most of the time. I'm going to wrap this up keep these maybe 15 minutes but yeah to conclude family has different meanings for everyone and the things you do for them what you're willing to do for them in general is based on how much you care about them or how much they're involved in your life not everyone has a family or not everyone has people who they can count on so sometimes they just depend on themselves and that that's completely fine as well at the end of the day you have yourself and if you have yourself what's above that friends family right that's the next step well that's where i'm at i'd say at least that's who i care about i've gotten past taking care of myself my mental health i i'm still working on at some points but it's really nice to know that I have people I can take care of. Anyway, that's it for me. Lone Salesman out. 
Let me know what you guys think of these. Uh, hit me up on Twitter, at Lone Salesman. I really appreciate some feedback. Anyway guys, I'll talk to you later. Lone Salesman, out.